Alrighty. So again, objectives, launch the task, and then you're going to be able to work within your groups for the majority of today. But let's look at these objectives first. Who hasn't read the objectives recently? Layla, can you read our first objective for us? I have reasons and explain each step in solving inequalities from appropriate qualities. Okay. Just like on your understanding check yesterday, the test that we have a week from today, um, you need to justify everything you do and the answers you pick and the steps you take, right? So it's important that we practice that, which is what today's task is all about. Why do you think I bring up this idea of appropriate properties? What, what is this all about? Why do the properties exist? So Right, we want things that are equivalent, right? They need to be effectively the same because that's how we find our solutions. So great job on that. Uh, Emery, can you read our second objective for us today? I can identify the differences and similarities between solving the equations and inequalities. There's a lot of similarities, right? We've seen that already, that the way we solve equations, the way we solve inequalities have a lot of similarities, right? But there are some key differences. And if we don't pay attention to those key differences, it can really catch us and mess us up when it comes time for the test, which is why we're going to be looking at those differences and similarities to, uh, today and next week as well. Okay, I think we already somewhat introduced this last, or yesterday, right? I at least gave it out. Did we already do work through number one together? Yes? I mean... We did work through number one together. Let's do a quick little recap um, then. So the situations below are a few more of the disagreements, right, and questions that Joaquin and Serena have, and your job is to decide how to answer the questions, deciding who is right and giving a mathematical explanation for your reasoning. Right, so this is your job. It is thinking through your reasoning that is going to help you improve your understanding and improve your ability on the assessments, okay? So you've got to talk through these ideas. Just like Joaquin and Serena talked through this, discussed it, presented their arguments, you need to present your arguments, your justification why, for why you think your answer is correct, and then you work together to come to a correct conclusion, or hopefully a correct conclusion. If things are off, I might ask uh, you some questions. I might even ask you some questions even if things are pretty good because it's by that explanation, that justification again that you're going to improve. Okay. So with number one, we saw this idea that Joaquin and Serena are assigned to graph the inequality x is greater than or equal to negative 7. And Joaquin thinks the graph should have an open dot and Serena thinks the graph should have a closed dot at negative 7. Who did we say was right yesterday? Serena, why is that? Because it's a closed dot. So because it's what? It's a closed dot. But why do we think it's a closed dot? Because it's equal to. Okay, so when it can equal it, we're looking at the idea of a closed dot. Does that make sense? So when the inequality can equal a number, then the number can be included, right? It's the idea of including that number that causes it to be a closed dot. job with what we said yesterday and an explanation and discussion of what we said yesterday? Okay. There's one more thing I do want to talk about. I talked about this in earlier classes, so I want to add this in here because this is an important thing. The numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 7, what would we call those numbers? Do you remember? Not 
Not quite. So let's graph these, uh, this thing, right? They're, they were supposed, they were assigned to graph this inequality. What number do I definitely need on this inequality, or on this number line? Seven? Seven? Not zero. Not zero. Negative seven. Negative seven. We need to make sure, right? We're paying attention to the fact that it's a negative. Now I will say, and this is an important detail, we may want to include zero because that will help us number the number line correctly. <laughs> I need Emery Parker for checkout, please. She's on her way. Emery, you will still have the homework, um, so make sure you look on Schoology at the slides or watch the video uh, to get what the homework is. Would anybody over here mind jumping over with Corel so that he has someone to talk to with the later problems? You got it, Layla? Thank you, I appreciate it. Have a good weekend. So, Cornell, I would agree that the zero might be helpful with this number line. Where would the zero go? To the left of the negative seven or to the right? To the right. To the right. Notice that then tells me that this needs to be negative six. A lot of students were flipping the direction of their uh, inequalities, forgetting that the negatives get to be smaller looking numbers. They're actually larger, but smaller looking numbers over here and bigger looking numbers over here. They have bigger magnitudes is what we would say. So which direction would I shade? I'm not putting the point yet or the dot. Which direction would I shade on this inequality? So to these numbers? What do you all think? Layla, you're shaking your head no. You think it's to the right? Um, yes. Okay. Desiree, what do you think? I think it's to the right. To the right, Jaleel? Mm -hmm. To the right as well? Why do you think they, they're saying to the right? You still confidence to the left, Corel? Um, Not as confident anymore? Not that. Um, what is that? Less than the greater than, right? That is a not less than or greater than. Those are two opposing ideas. You will never put a less than with a greater than. What is, is the? Less than equal to. Yeah. Which side of this inequality is bigger? Look at the inequality. Just the symbol. Which side is bigger? This an X. No. Which side of the inequality is bigger? The left or the right side? Oh, left. See how that, that side is a bigger thing? So whatever is on the left is bigger than what's on the right. So this is greater than or equal to negative 7. Okay? Does that make sense? Bigger side of this symbol over here, so this is bigger than this. It's greater than this. So how do I know which direction to shade? Three out of four of you said I should shade to the right. Why would it be the numbers to the right? Okay, so they're one, they're greater than negative seven. So what that means, and we want to check this, is negative five greater than or equal to negative seven? Greater than. It's greater than. So that makes the inequality true. What is the thing that makes any an inequality true? Starts with an S. Solution. Solution. Everything to do with equations and inequalities, when we solve, we're looking for solutions, right? When we graph, we're graphing the Solutions. What about negative 2? Right here, is that greater than or equal to negative 7? It's greater than. Now if I check this negative 10, is negative 10 greater than or equal to negative 7? It's less than, so that would be false. Notice how everything that we're shading makes the inequality... What about negative 7? It'd be equal to. So does it make the inequality true? Yes. So I need to shade it. So would that be an open point or a closed? Close. You see how the idea of an open versus closed point is the same idea as shading. What makes the inequality true? true? What are my solutions? Does that make sense? And that's the detail I would probably add here. Um, we shade the solutions. And 
negative 7 is a solution. So it should be shaded. A closed point. Does that little extra detail help it make a little bit more sense? You good with those ideas? Yeah. Alright, for the rest of the period, for the next 35 minutes, um, I want y'all talking, I want y'all discussing uh, these, as far as we can go, these problems, starting here with number two, right? Joaquin and Serena are looking at the problem 3x plus 1 is greater than 0. And Serena says the inequality is always true because multiplying a number by 3 and then adding 1 to it makes the number greater than 0. Is she right? Explain why or why not. Right? So your job is to answer the questions, decide who's right, and to give a mathematical explanation. So go ahead and start talking with each other. I'm leaving this up here for now, but that's only for number 1. But go ahead and talk with each other and have this discussion. It's by thinking through these ideas. One, I can hear your thoughts and I can give you a little bit of feedback, but two, it's going to force you to think and to understand better. So go ahead and start reading through it on your own, trying to come up with an answer, and then discussing. <laughs>